Hey guys, welcome. I recently had one of my patrons ask for a video on best practices for collectibles. And there are a lot of different ways that you could go about this, but I'll show you how I normally go about doing this. It's pretty straightforward and it's very scalable. So it's really easy to add new collectibles or completely new types of collectibles using this system. Ready? Let's go. So what I have here is basically two variants of two different types of collectibles here. One is just currency, which is pretty standard, but collectibles can get pretty specific as well. So we've also got two different upgrade collectibles that can unlock an ability on our player as well. If we pick up this one, we unlock the ability to go invisible. And if we pick up this one, we unlock the ability to spawn bombs. So to avoid going back and forth between Unity and Visual Studio a whole bunch of times, let's set up a few scripts right off the bat. We need one called collectible. Another one called Collectible Trigger Handler. And we need one called Collectible SO Base. And by the way, these are really small, straightforward scripts. So let's start with the Collectible script. And we require two things. We need some sort of Collider 2D, and I'm just going to use a circle. But if you have complex shapes, then you could use a polygon, and it will automatically shape around your object. We're also going to require the Collectible Trigger Handler. So putting these here obviously makes them required, but it will also add these components to a game object if they don't already exist on that game object. And what we're going to do is use an onTrigger enter 2 d to detect when we walk into these collectibles, so we know we want our collider to be a trigger. So let's call the reset function, which gets called every time a component is added to a game object. And in there, we'll set the trigger to true. And we're also going to put our collect method on here. And to make things easier for finding references down the line, we'll pass in the game object that touched the trigger as a parameter. Okay, so we'll come back to this script in a sec, but we're not actually going to handle the collection logic in here. That will be handled by another script down the line. So let's do that and open up our collectible SO base. Now, based on the name, you may have guessed that this will inherit from scriptable object. And if you do not know what those are, then I'd recommend doing a quick read upon those before continuing so that you understand what it is that they do. But we are also going to make this an abstract class because I want to have an abstract method called collect with the same parameter as before. This will essentially force us to create this collect method on any scripts that inherit from this base class. So now let's go back to our collectible because here we'll actually make a serialized variable for that scriptable object base. And we'll call its collect method inside this one here. And on the surface, having so many different scripts can seem more confusing, but this is the beautiful thing about abstract classes is that you can save the work of having to rewrite a whole bunch of boilerplate logic in a whole bunch of different scripts. We're going to do the actual collection logic later on down the line in more specific scripts. So this method will get called when we actually collide with the object. So let's write the collectible trigger handler script now. So like we said, we'll do it in an on trigger enter 2D method. And you could check for a player tag here. What my personal preference is though, is to use a layer mask and check if the object is within that layer. And so the easiest way we can check for that is I actually have a little helper script that checks if my object is inside of a layer mask. Just go ahead and copy it if you want it. This is called a bitwise operator and they are really confusing to write, which is why I just always use this helper function. You'll also notice in here, there's a create layer mask function as well. If you wanna give your layer mask a default value in the inspector, then you can use this method to help you do that more easily. So back here, we'll give our layer mask a default value by using our create layer mask function and passing in layer nine for me, which is my player. Then down here, we'll say if our object is in our layer mask, then we need to collect and destroy this object. So to actually call collect, we'll just get a reference to our collectible script and call its collect method here, passing in collision.gameObject, which in this scenario means our player. So I've got two coins here, a little bomb item and this scroll papyrus thing. Now let's actually set up the scripts to do the actual collection and we'll start with the coins. So I will create a script called collectible currency SO. And this is the one we'll actually create an asset for. So we'll inherit from our base class and use our create asset menu attribute. As I said, because we're inheriting from an abstract class with an abstract method, it's going to force us to implement the collect method. So in here, this is where the actual collection logic happens. 
And how you implement the specifics is entirely going to depend on your project and how you have all of your different systems set up. In this project, I have a currency manager script here, which is a singleton, and it just updates a currency variable. And this method also ensures that our UI gets updated as well. This class is another singleton and it simply changes the text which is on our HUD canvas. So back in our collectible currency SO, I'll call the increment currency method. And we do need to know by how much we want to increment it by, so we'll set up a public int for that. So let's go ahead and bring the currency all the way to the finish line before implementing our other collection type because that's going to let us better see how easy this system actually is to use. What we're missing right now is some sort of effect and some sound. Now over here on my player I have a player effect script. So you can do it this way with a separate script. You could use an event manager and hook up different events. I just wouldn't recommend that you put the effects logic in the collection logic itself because those should be separated out which is going to make debugging and changing things later on easier to do. Now in the script there's nothing too interesting going on here. I have this play collection effect where we pass in a time, color, and audio clip. And it has some logic to restart the collect effect if it's already playing. It starts our effect coroutine and plays a sound. Our coroutine is really simple, it's just bringing a float on a hit effects shader from the last tutorial I did, it's bringing it up and then bringing it back down. Now to hook all of this up, we just need to set up a few simple things. Back in our base script, I'm going to call this collection effects. We'll set up a color, a flash time, and an audio clip. We'll also set up a protected player effects variable. All of these will trickle down into our child classes that inherit from this class since this is abstract, which means we can change these for every single effect if we want. Now we also need to set up a method to find our player effects script. Now I really do get tired of using the get component and having to worry, is it on a child game object? Is it on a parent game object? Is it on the same game object? And having to change the call based on that. So I have this helper class here with a static method which simply checks for all three of those, okay? Go ahead and copy it if you want because it's really great. And now back in our collectible currency SO script, if our player effects is null, then we'll call that get reference method. And then we'll play our effect from that script. Again, there's lots of different ways that you can handle this, but I find having a separate script for effects to just be nice and clean. You could certainly separate out the audio as well for a much larger project if that's what you wanted to do. Anyways, so now back to the coin in our scene. We'll add the collectible script to it. Now that automatically added a circle collider 2D, which automatically was set to trigger. And it's got the trigger handler script as well, with a layer mask already set to player. And so all we need is on this collectible script here, it just needs an asset reference. So let's create two, one for a one coin and another for a five coin. And all we have to do is change the currency amount in each and set the color and the clip that plays. And just plug in those assets. And if we play, we collect this one, a nice sound effect plays, our HUD updated by one. And then we collect this one, same effect, but we could change it if we want, and the HUD updated by five. So let's reuse our base class to make another collectible type. So we'll set up a new script, and this time it's going to be called collectible upgrade SO. Make sure it inherits from our base class and set up the attribute. And again, the base class forces us to implement the collect method. Now we could make this another base class, which could just be the base for all upgrades, but that seems a little bit overkill for this project. So what I'm gonna do is just set up an enum that we select in the inspector, which will either do the bomb upgrade or the invisibility upgrade. So next we'll create a method called give power up with a switch statement inside. I'm using a switch statement not for any special reason, just because that's what I usually do when I'm working with enums. And for the bomb, we'll call a method called give bomb power up. And for the invisibility, we'll create a method called give invisibility power up. So again, the logic for this depends on your game with your systems and how you've set up everything. You might have scriptable objects, you might have game objects that enable and disable. I prefer a really simple approach for power-ups. So what I have is a script called player upgrades. 
And inside, I have a property to check if we currently have this ability unlocked. Our player invisibility and player bomb script here check if those are true before actually being able to use the ability. And we get a reference to each of those scripts because they are going to start disabled just to ensure that their update methods aren't being called when they don't need to be. And then when we actually unlock the bomb and unlock the invisibility, we enable those scripts and set those bools to true. So really all we have to do is get a reference to this script and call these methods. So back in our collectible upgrade SO script, I'll set up a variable for that upgrade script. And if it's null, we'll use that nifty little method from before, which acts just like get component, except it checks the parents and children and the actual game object. And now in this method, we'll unlock the bomb. And in this method, we'll unlock the invisibility power up. And up here, we need to actually call the give power up method. And we can actually just copy and paste that same bit of code from our other collectible script for the effects as well. And that's really it for the scripting. Now we go back and just create an asset for each of those. We make sure we change the enum value to the right one, and I at least gave these ones a different sound and color. And now over here on my bomb object, it's as simple as adding the collectible script. All these defaults should be good, and add the bomb asset to this one. And on the scroll, same thing, add the collectible script, and add the invisibility upgrade asset. Now if I collect the scroll, we can turn invisible or back again. And if I collect the bomb, we can start throwing lots of those around. So if you wanted to expand this and add more abilities, for example, you could just add to the enum and put the logic in the collectible upgrade SO script. If you wanted to make a different type of collectible entirely, well then you'd again create a new script and inherit from our main base class and put the logic for whatever you need that collectible to do inside its child class. If you're interested in supporting us, my patrons get full access to the project files for every tutorial ever made on this channel on GitHub, so head on over to Patreon if that's something that interests you. Thanks so much for watching.